Good morning, everybody. This is Linda with What's Going On News. All right, I found out some more about Jade Helm. Uh, I'm going to tell you what Jade Helm 15 stands for. Uh, you might not be able to see my screen very well, but I've got to be able to read it, and I can't read it through my phone, and this is the only way I can do this video. Uh, Jade Helm 15 it means the drill is a dissident extraction exercise. Now, I got some uh, information as to what Jade and Helm means. Jade is Joint Assistant for Development and Execution. Helm means Homeland Eradication of Local Militants. I found these on um, the Air Force Research Laboratory data are dated 2001 and another one on Department of State Publication 7277 Disarmament Series 5 released in September 1961, Office of Public Services, Bureau of Public Affairs. Now, let me tell you what they, this means. Um, Jade is, uh, let me get down here, hold on. Okay. Okay, here we go. The history of the term Jade and Helm and 15. The 15 is, stands for the year 2015. The term Jade, uh, I read an, the document that uh, I had mentioned above, and what it boils down to is uh, they have a computer program that sets up their execution plan um, for whatever uh, exercise, drill, or confrontation that they're in. Now, if for some reason that uh, terrain changes or the region changes or anything that is part of their plan changes, this computer program can um, instantly give them another plan to still be able to carry out the original plan. And that is called JADE, stands for Joint Assistant for Deployment and Execution. So it just, you know, redesigns the plan so that they can work in the perimeters that that have changed for them. Now that's important to remember. Now uh, Jade is is flexible, so it keeps them flexible so that they can proceed with their original plan. Now Helm is uh, the revolutionary development of modern weapons within a world divided by serious ideological differences, has produced a crisis in human history. In order to overcome the danger of nuclear war now confronting mankind, the United States has introduced at the 16th General Assembly of the United Nations a program for general and complete disarmament in a peaceful world. Hang on to that. This new program provides for the progressive reduction of the war-making capabilities of nations and the simultaneous strengthening of international institutions to settle disputes and maintain the peace. It sets forth a series of comprehensive measures which can and should be taken in order to bring about a world in which there will be Freedom from war and security for all states. Now that sounds like a new world order to me. It is based on three principles deemed essential to the achievement of practical progress in the disarmament field. Now what that is really talking about is world disarmament. However, you have to remember the government gives these um, exercises a name that is um, rooted in um, their original um, ideology, their original plans for 
whatever, like the New World Order or whatever. And um, so when you put the jade, the flexibility of jade, together with helm in disarmament for a peaceful New World Order, then we can see what Jade Helm 15 means. Jade is flexible. In other words, from state to state, the terrain's going to be different. The geology is going to be different. The people's going to be different. The circumstances are going to be different. So this Jade program can keep the uh, troops that are invading these states flexible and still keep to the main plan and then helm is about disarming the people to keep the peace if you can put those two together you've got jade helm and then 15 is for the year 2015 now i've also found that there are um two lists they are the red list and the blue list. The red list are the people who own guns. They're either registered, and that's how they know about these people, or they are uh, found out through the GPS that's on these guns, and they have tracked them down that way. So the red list are the armed people. The blue list are the, the soldiers or the, the ones that... The, that are like from China and Russia, those, those multinational people that they will have to go around to these states and disarm the people. And um, if you ask me, why do you say there'll be a multinational uh, troop going around to the different states to disarm um let me see if i can find it uh there was a um hmm, jeepers all right i can't find it right this minute but there was att is the name of this program um that um they use multinational multinational forces to help with the disarmament and um these multinational forces that are here are russian and chinese so um these multinational forces will uh be a part of this disarmament i think i'm getting closer to it uh hmm yeah so here we go. This is uh, the UN Small Arms Treaty. It states state parties to the ATT makes, may seek assistance in implementing the treaty. The ATT indicates that a voluntary trust fund was established to promote the establishment of a multinational gun confiscation program. So you see why these uh, Chinese and Russian soldiers have been here for years, quote-unquote, training. I often wondered why our enemy was training in our country. I think the picture's getting clearer now. Okay, now, there have been uh, military uh, people saying that this Jade Helm is perfectly legal. And other people said, no, it's against the law to do um, uh, drills in a civilian area. Well, they've seen to that because they have new laws. Or they aren't really new anymore. But they have laws that are in place now so that it will be legal. And those laws are the NDAA and the HR 645. So, um, these laws are in place, so now it is legal for them to, to do this to us. Okay, back to that blue, that red and blue list. Now, the blue 
list are the people that's going to go out and um and uh take the guns from the people on the red list uh, i've read two views on this one view is that the red list people will uh, not just have their guns confiscated because they can go out and buy more after they're confiscated so they are going to eliminate the gun owner not just take their guns they may do it on the spot or they may take them to one of the fema death camps and do it there um and there are fema death camps um uh, i have an interview today with uh Doc Marquis, who has actually been to one of the uh, FEMA death camps. So I'm going to be t uh, interviewing him today by telephone um, on that subject. And, and I'm going to put it in tomorrow's newsletter. Um, and then the blue list people who are the ones that are doing the eliminating, they will themselves get eliminated by the elite uh, people. They're... Um, their eliminators <laughs> to uh, get rid of them because a dead man doesn't talk. So I take it to be that they want to keep this um, elimination secret to keep the people from rioting. Now, here are those uh, laws that are making this legal. The H.R. 645 to direct the Secretary of Homeland Security to establish national emergency centers on military installations. The purpose of a national emergency center shall be to use existing infrastructures for our purposes with Jade Helm. That would mean malls, Walmarts, stadiums, large stores. Another one is to provide temporary housing, medical, humanitarian assistant to individuals and families dislocated due to an emergency or major disaster. Now, remember, this sounds good and may be enacted for an emergency, yes. But remember, our government doesn't protect us. Rather, they, they commit um, treason every day. Uh, they, uh, the above can be used for any reason, as you will read below. Now, this particular uh, number four, it leaves the door wide open for abuse. Number four says, um, to meet other appropriate needs as determined by the Secretary of Homeland Security. So you see, it's up to them to decide how they're going to use these so-called emergency shelters. Now, for the NDAA, Yes, it's funding, but if you keep reading on that document, it will tell you the NDAA provision first signed into law in 2012, which permits the military to detain individuals indefinitely without trial. So that's what those two laws that they're using to, to keep this legal. So yes, it is a legal maneuver that they're going to be doing to us. All right. Now, um, they have 28,000 minimum preachers who are a part of this Jade Helm emergency response clergy team. And these preachers are told to use uh, the scripture in Romans 13, 1, where it says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So these preachers are only allowed to use that one scripture out of the Bible. They're not allowed to, meet, to mention Jesus or God or the Bible or scripture, except for this one scripture. Um, and, of course, they're not allowed to clarify that statement uh, that uh, uh, they, uh, they are to uh, follow the government unless the government is going against God. See, they, they didn't go that far in the scripture. They pick and choose like a lot of these preachers do today. But these preachers have been trained to uh, infiltrate their churches 
to inform on their congregation. And then when this goes down, they will be sent to the uh, FEMA camps. They aren't allowed in there without their name tag that proves that they've been through the training. And they were to calm down the families because these families are split up. Because when this goes down, it's going to go down real fast. So the kids may be at school, the mother and fa mother's at home, the father's at work. So they'll go to the house, they'll take the mother, take her one place, take the father from work, take him another place, go to the school, take the children, put them in another place. So the families are going to be split up. And so, of course, everybody is going crazy. So it's up to these pastors, and I use that term loosely, uh, to keep these families calmed down and to tell them to obey these people that everything's going to be okay and we're, the God tells us to submit to the government and, and all this kind of thing. Um, the, these pastors are sworn to secrecy, so if, um, if you ask your pastor if he has been to the FEMA training, he's not allowed to tell you. So, I'm warning you, things are getting really, really sickening out there. Now, um, there are some articles that make me think that um, the way they're going to uh, put this Jade Helm 15 into effect is by martial law. And I'm putting some of these articles in the newsletter to show you Um Statewide weapons of mass destruction drill underway in Des Moines. Now that I find a little unnerving um, because if you look down here at another article, it says that the feds, let me get to it, uh, weary of national a natural disaster, New York fed bulks up in Chicago. They are moving their offices from, D uh, from New York to Chicago. Uh, I find that really strange. Of course, they're using the term natural disaster because of Sandy. Now, that was a 500-year storm. Uh, in my lifetime, and I've been on this planet for six to seven years, New York has never had that kind of a problem. So I'm finding it very strange that they are moving uh, the Fed up to Chicago. And then Chicago, uh, new, the um, drill for weapons of mass destruction. You know, that that just kind of unnerves me. And then you've got the, the fact that there are several drills going on. Uh, one in a sports park. And then there's another one uh, in Prescott. And they're telling you, uh, if you see some unusual helicopters overhead in the next couple of days, there's nothing to worry about. Nothing. So, DHS has purchased 62 million more rounds of AR-15 ammunition. They already bought billions of rounds in the last couple of years. Why do they need 62 million more? Okie dokie. So, uh, here's, oh, this article is really good. You need to read this one. Um, it is full of stuff. Um, this one guy sent in this picture, uh, sent in a, a video too, where, um, he was sitting there and it, these troops come marching down the road. And, uh, don't know why. Okay. So, they give a lot of information in this article. It's really, really informative. So we really need to look at that. Okay, guys, I wanted you to see that there was more to Jade Helm 15. And the name Jade Helm has a purpose and a reason for it. I hope this helps you. Please subscribe to the newsletter to stay informed and to get the interview with Doc Marquis. All right, God bless, and please, y'all, pray hard that Jade, being that flexibility, they can change this if they need to, and that with this publicity that is going around about this, maybe they will change it, and we can get more time so that we can go home before all this happens. God bless y'all. Bye-bye.